One of the things I will say is, is with my co-founder and I, we're very different in every way possible, right? We're just different people. We look different. We come from different backgrounds. One of the things that we realized is that if we could actually intersect our networks, if we could start thinking outside of just our circle of trust and our circle of influence, that's when like the true diversity comes. We're on a continuous racial equity, diversity, inclusion journey at the foundation, and both in, both in what we do in our external work, Davion, but also internally, we're on this path. And um, I'd love to hear your perspective on how you um, think about building diverse, inclusive teams. And, you know, what do you think is most effective in doing that? Uh, Because I know you're very passionate about that. It's so important for us to be able to like look up and understand that we need a base of of resources and teams that's representative of of our customers, because we need to understand what everybody's thinking about. And you know, we, we try to make a conscious effort. We have a very diverse team, especially for like a tech company here in, in Kansas by any means, but, but we've tried to really be deliberate. Like we can't hit the easy button. So it's so important for us to diversify our organization, diversify the people that we bring in. Um, we have to have openness. Um, we have to have empathy. Um, we have to lead in that manner. And if you're in that diverse group, right, whether it's black, whether it's female, it's important for you to be able to look back and, and, and understand that you have a responsibility to keep diversifying and keep bringing your network in. Because I think that the intersection of networks is probably, you know, one of the single most ways that we could drive diversity. Because if you think about it, right, we live in our little bubbles, we have our friends that we hang out with. And most times they look like us. The other thing that I think we should be doing is if you look in your bubble or your organization outside of family and you all look the same, then, you know, you need to like find ways to disrupt that and, and, and to, to, to really diversify that group because you learn so much um, and it's such a better place. And how can we as a community be more diverse and inclusive so that, that people just don't stay in their bubbles? Any thoughts on that? I, I don't think that there's any silver bullet. That's for sure. I think conversations like these are important. One of the things that I would say that, you know, if there's a positive for the events that we saw in 2020 is that we're having more conversations. Um, My biggest thing is that um, a lot of times people have these conversations, but then it just falls on deaf ears and nothing really happens about it, right? So we have to be thorough and we have to follow up on those conversations and making sure that we're doing our part um, from the perspective of being deliberate. If we're not like deliberate about like forcing ourselves to focus on diversity, we're going to just automatically crawl back into the the holes that we've been in before with the small network of people. We have to be deliberate. We have to go above and beyond. We have to have these conversations. I think we need to like really explore our biases because I think that it's natural that, and look, it's okay, right? I I think it's it's silly for us to assume that people don't have some level of bias, but we got to address those and really try to break down those barriers. I think it starts within organizations. It starts within friendships. It starts within discussions. It starts within our communities. I mean, it's across the board. There's a ton of stuff that we have to do. And, you know, as a person of color, we need allies. 